Welcome everybody to today's webinar. I want to thank everybody for coming. My name is Mike Lugo. I'm the technical support engineer here. With me, we have a special guest, Nancy. Hi, Mike. Hi, everyone. I'm Nancy. I'll be doing the webinar with you guys this month, and I'm pretty excited. Well, thank you. Thank you, all of you, for signing up, and I hope this is an informative webinar for you guys. And I would just like to say this was brought to you by Bolai Technology Group. We have over 20 years experience. We are ISO certified distributor, GSA scheduled contract 84, and A plus customer service. So in this webinar, it's going to be a little different. Um, we're going to be talking about the things that are coming up for this year. So like some anticipated changes to the surveillance industry, such as like video surveillance needs, um, features such as like video analytics, access control, PTZ smart controls, and then we're going to go into like 4K resolution and like storage. Um, those are just like a few things that we're going to be talking about and uh, what are the benefits to upgrading and when you should upgrade. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. I just want to remind you guys, if you guys have any questions throughout the webinar, go ahead and type it into the chat. We'll be happy to answer your questions as we go forward. So, security needs, cutting edge features, video analytics. So, by a security professional, video analytics, um, multi-site transmission to central command center, efficient ways of optimizing storage and increasing need for integration. That is some important stuff. So. Can you tell us a little bit about it, Mike? Sure. So um, in the security industry, as we all are, uh, video analytics and storage are amongst the top needed um, things for this year, 2017, as well as access control. It's been around for a long time, but there's a lot of advances in the technology. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, everybody knows about 4K. It's getting pretty popular. Uh, we anticipate this year will be a big year for 4K. And storage, storage is getting storage pretty is big. big. Yeah. yeah. So especially we're going to, with the video. Yes. Yeah. And then we talk about compression and storage. That's going to be a big thing this year. Um, yeah. So video analytics. Um, we all heard of video analytics, and but we're going to go into some things that um, are new that I didn't even know. I, I was talking to this about. Um, I was talking to Mike about this, and this is some pretty crazy stuff. Um, there's anti-surveillance clothing. So can you tell us what that is? That looks really weird. Yeah, that's pretty crazy stuff. Um, I don't know if you guys can see the little faces inside the um, graphic there, but so apparently this company is coming up with um, textile patterns in the clothing that will trick um, facial recognition software. Uh, as criminals and stuff get smarter, that means that our analytics have to get smarter. So how do we counter that? Now, today's analytics will not just look for eyes, nose, and a mouth. They're going to be looking for facial features rather than just the face itself, which is pretty gnarly. Like, I don't know. I mean, we've heard of facial recognition, like Mike said, but when you're going into, like, your forehead and your eyes and your nose, it's like, wow. Yeah, and it's pretty, it's, you think about it, it's pretty crazy. You can put makeup on your face or whatever, but you can't hide, you know, how deep. Hide ugly. <laughs> right? <laughs> you can't hide some of the features that you have on your face, how deep your eyes are, how, you know, long your nose is, stuff like that. Um software nowadays is able to detect that and not just a face. So this year you're going to see a lot of facial recognition start to improve and, and really blow up. Facial recognition in depth. Yes. Better start wearing more makeup. <laughs> <laughs> so the anti-ALPR camera. Um, so also, like, kind of like the facial recognition. So some people are trying to, you know, like shield their face or, you know, trick the camera. They also do that to license plates. Um, as you can see, you can't even see the license plate. Um, it's blurred by a really bright light. 
Um, so how is this going to be improved? So, I mean, for years now this has been going on. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers the spray can they had before that would blur out the uh, red light cameras at intersections. That was a big thing for a while. Um, we now they have lights, which is another step further. So what does that mean? Once again, our analytics have to get smarter. Are these are these like your obviously um, stock lights from you know your car is fine, but does this is this caused by like LEDs by like little aftermarket bulbs? It's a good question. Um, it actually is. It's actually part of the license plate frame, um, and it's positioned in a way that it's gonna block or give too much light to a camera and not allow it to see the license plate. Um, just like the facial recognition, this is all ran by software now. The IP cameras nowadays, or IP systems are able to get rid of that. You know, WDR cameras and software in general can get rid of that light and allow you to see the license plate. Not only that, it allows you to um, detect who's driving. Um, cop cars nowadays have cameras built into them. They drive around and it detects the license plate and they are able to pull up information off of that. You no longer even have to type in license plates anymore. The oh, software okay. is getting pretty, pretty, That's pretty crazy. It's pretty interesting. It is. It's very interesting. It's kind of scary as well. Um, but so you can see a lot of that this year. License plate cameras have been a big thing for many years, but now you're going to see more um, smarter software out there because criminals are getting smarter and they're finding other ways to get past um, detection devices. That's great. Oh, and then um, I thought this is pretty interesting too. Yeah, we've all heard of people counting and object counting, but this is kind of interesting because it it counts people and it counts vehicles and it marks it registers them as two different things. So I I find it really interesting because you know when you're looking at your um, at your you know at your surveillance recording. You're trying to differentiate them, and but this does it for you. So, can you tell us a little bit about that, Mike? Yeah. So this is pretty cool. Like um, Nancy said, it it's able to tell, you know, people and cars separate them. Um, objects, not just like people's and cars, but like objects, exactly. um, anything moving, and it'll like register it as something different. So, like for instance, I know it's a pretty big platform, but Disneyland, you know, they want to see how many cars are coming in. How many? <laughs> <laughs> I wish one of us can get a contract for Disneyland. That'd be nice. That'd be awesome. But I can tell, you know, how many cars came in, how many people got off the car. It can actually count for you and tell you um, objects that are moving um, and count them. Different, just different ways of tracking people and objects and cars. It's another big um, feature this year that's going to be blowing up. You see a lot of it uh, increasing in. And enterprise systems and IP systems is going to be the big one of the big things. Definitely, I agree. So for access control, this is another thing that's been um, going on for a while. Like we said, we have these features, but we're just going to start making them better, improving them. So another way of um, of of access controls, you know, we have facial recognition. Um, I iris recognition, visual tracking, alarm, motion detection. We have all of that. So, how are we going to be improving this in the next um, coming year? Good question. I don't know how many people listening are in integrators or actually deal with access control um, installs and stuff like that. But this is a big market right now. Um, integrating your your CCTV system with whether it be IP or analog now, um, whether it, we're integrating this with our our systems, and it's a, it's a big thing. Um, Biometrics is a big thing that's coming up now. You can access your have your cameras track your actual biometrics. Someone clocks in, you're able to see what time they came in, see what door they went in, uh, things of that nature. So this is going to be a big a big thing this year. Right, like you know, eyeballs. Fingers. <laughs> uh, goes along with facial recognition, things like that. Size your butt. <laughs> I'm just playing. So the ability to integrate 
um, and automate with access control systems have been it's been around for a while um, but now um, it's not just IP uh, we can do analog cameras analog systems can now be integrated into access control um, and it's just going to help make things more efficient um, not only with security but employee tracking you're not going to have to have someone there watching the cameras 24 7 because everything's going to be automa automated now right things are just getting more like convenient you know um convenient and smarter and you just not having the computer do everything for you which is pretty much the future yeah and it's pretty exciting um especially for installers integrators things like that this is, opens up a whole new market to um to your customers you know you're able to present them with um new technology to help their business be more efficient, you know. Oh, um, by the way, do you guys have any questions about anything? Um, I know we're kind of going through this, but um, if anyone has any questions about any of this, just feel free to type it in. Or if we're going too fast. Or if we're going too mm -hmm. fast, you know, we, we're workaholics, so we <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I know most. Bam, boom. <laughs> most of you are probably what coming back from lunch right now. Oh yeah. So. Yeah, it's, um, it's still morning over here. Yeah, Sorry. if we're zipping through it. Let us know. Go ahead and type it in, and then we'll slow down. If not, we will continue. Control over coax. This is really interesting. Um, this is probably really in well for me. I think this is like one of the most interesting features um, cameras can do nowadays. Um, it's it's really really convenient. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. If not, um, Mike, can you go into detail about it? Yeah. So basically, if, if those of you aren't familiar with it, and you are familiar with older camera systems, Palco C, Coaxitron, very similar. It's the same concept um, as that. What does that mean? You are able to control functions, features, um, cameras' ability through the actual coax cable. You don't have to have a separate RS-485 or uh, 232 cable to control. You're able to do everything that you can do. Through the DVR. Through the DVR and through one cable. That's and what's exciting. Um, we just released our, um, our cameras that have motorized lens, as well as we do have a PTZ. But the, some of the functions and features you can access um, verifocal lens, you can do the zoom in and autofocus from. Autofocus, you don't have to do everything from on site of the camera. I know how that's really inconvenient. How some installers, you know, they go up to the camera and they're trying to fix it, they're trying to see it on their screen. It's really inconvenient and it's just hard. And, you know, just having the, the convenience and the ease of doing it with control over coax can save, you know, stress, headaches. All that good stuff. The biggest time. What's time? Time is money. So, yeah. I mean, all you got to do is point the camera in the right direction and everything else is done. Yeah, this is a big, big feature. We've been waiting for this for a while. Um, those of you who are familiar with our previous line of cameras that had um, that had the switch on it, um, you're able to get into the OSD to the switch. You no longer need the switch. The switch is still there, but now you can do it from the DVR, which is super convenient, makes life super easy. Um, and you're going to see this industry-wide uh, control over coax is, is a big thing this year. Um, uh, just about every company is going to have some sort of control over coax on their cameras. So like we talked about, the older conventional way would be using an <laughs> RS-45 cable. Um, so you'd run that parallel with your power and your video and this is with the standard DVR. Yeah, standard. So that's a good point that Nancy brought up. So you have to make sure that the DVR you have is control over coax com compatible, not just any DVR, as well as the camera has to be control over coax compatible as well. So it's not just any DVR. That's a good point that she brought up. Um, and yeah, the old way was, was hooking up that RS-45 to your DVR or to a controller. We didn't take away the RS-45. It's still there. For those of you who don't have a newer control over coax DVR. You don't have it yet. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have it yet. You're still able to use the RS-45. But of course, once you get your taste of control over coax, you'll never go back probably. So, but it's there, just for the record. Um, and yeah, now, that's it. All those other wires are gone. 
Wait, yeah, can you go back real quick, Mike? Yeah. So see here we have for the power, the the R RG fifty nine, the RS forty five, and then the, con the the controller, and this is just with the standard DVR. And now I I just really like this graphic. Go ahead, go to the next yeah. one. Now the four wires, you can see there's four cables you got to run. Now you would just directly one cable, one just one everything, you know. Yeah. So and this is a control over coax DVR. Yeah. With one Siamese cable, you got power and controls and video. One wired run. That's, I mean, how many? One can do it all. Yeah. How many headaches will that take away? How much time will that save? How much more it's money just, will that make? And it's also just cleaner. You know, like nowadays we have like wireless everything, and you know, um, cable management would be so much easier. Yes. It's just you know the convenience. I know if the hard solid listening, cable management is probably the biggest one of the biggest headaches. In the industry, I did installs for a long time, and people pay good money to have a clean-looking install. Um, this Can't is, get cleaner than this. <laughs> this I mean, until we have that. wireless PTZs and wireless DVRs, <laughs> which I hope will happen, but you never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, we have ours now. Look, look for like I said, industry-wide. You're going to see control over coax taking over the industry. <laughs> Data compression. This is probably one of my favorite parts too. Yeah, uh, H.265 high efficient, efficiency video coding. Um, I am pretty sure people have gotten their their um, their knowledge about this, uh, but this is really cool because it's less bandwidth and storage with the same or even better quality video. And instead of using, you know, like two hard drives, you're down to just one, which saves you money on the storage, but still having that really good video quality. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know what H.265 is, or HEVC it's also called, um, data compression. We are used to H.264, which we've had for a number of years now, and it was a major improve to um, MJPEG. You know, it saved us a lot of video, drive space, it was faster, it was more efficient. Well, now we've got an upgrade to that and H.265. It's not new, it's been around for a couple of years, but this year you're going to see it start to kinda, really take kinda off. Kind of be like the foundation of recording because H.264 was pretty much a foundation for everything, but, um, you know, just technology is getting better, uh, it's getting more efficient, just like everything else. And to H.265 is just, it's going to be pretty much the norm of the future. Yeah, and Nancy's right. This will be the new industry standard um, in years to come. But like I said, it's been out for a couple of years. This year, you're going to see it more mainstream. Who knows? By next year, it might be the new norm, like H.264 is now. Um, so this is going to be a big thing. You want to, what does that mean? You make sure your DVRs and cameras all have to be H.265 compatible. Not just anything can be um, H.265. Just because you have it doesn't mean it's going to work. It's going to work, right. So what is it? <laughs> um, video, video quality, like Nancy mentioned. Um, storage space. Speed. You're able to get double the speed or double the bandwidth out of it um, for the same quality as you would H.264. Um, the quality is slightly better than H.264 because of the compression. They're able to compress the video down more efficiently, and it's going to give you better video. Yeah, it's um, it's high efficient, high efficiency, and like low complexity. And that's what everything is nowadays. We're, we want to be more efficient. We want less complex things. We want more automation. We want to do less work, right? We so. want everything. <laughs> we want everything, and we want it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's faster. It's faster. It's better. It's more efficient. That's where the future is going. So. Technology needs to grow with that. Um, but it also takes resolution. Resolution, 4K, stuff like that is done now because of H.265. We weren't able to do this before with H.264 because it was just too big. Files were too big, um, taking too much bandwidth. This technology allows 8K or ultra high def to actually be a real thing, to actually be on it's TVs a now. Yeah, this was. You know, back in the days, 
six, seven years ago when HD was considered, you know, uh, 480p, and then in 720p, 1080p, you know, we got 4K, now we're up to 8K, and it's going to continue to grow, and it's all possible because of um, H.265 and compression and technology that's improving. That's really interesting. Um, so this is the quick graphic of H.264 versus H.265. Both are very clear pictures, but in the graphic you can see that there's just a little more detail with the H.265. There's a bit more detail, a little bit more uh, saturation, um, better image quality. I mean, you're, the image quality is, I, I guess you could say it's equal, but uh, H.265 brings out more like more color. It's just yeah, it's just better. It's just nicer, cleaner. It's nicer. <laughs> we want we want everything nice, so you know. And we had a webinar a couple months back about more in depth into how this actually works, and it gets it can get pretty technical. Yeah, this could be a a, a webinar all on its own, um, and we do have one. So uh, oh, just uh, veering off a little. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel, and if you are interested in getting some more details about H.265 rather than what we were just spoke about, um, you can go on uh, to Bolide USA uh, on YouTube, and you can check out all the past webinars, uh, the H.265 webinar, uh, just, just to let you guys know. It's good stuff. Sorry. <laughs> Keep going, Mike. <laughs> uh, that's good stuff, though. I mean, you have to help you guys out a lot in your everyday installs sales tips for end users, how to um, connect things before you give us a call. We're always, you're always welcome to call us though. But, you know, just information, knowledge basically. But anyways, moving on. Um, better quality, less bandwidth. Um, uh, this is a really good example. Um, the KBPS, you know, you can totally tell the difference. It takes it Super low. I mean, it's it's, it's less than half of what H.264 can do. And which is big because nowadays, what's the big thing for everybody? Mobile. Mobile, and you know, I've always run into problems with like storage, and I need more of this and more of that. If I can apply this to my phone, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a girl, and I take a lot of pictures and videos, so I I'm looking forward to H.265 kind of taking over the whole, you know. Technology. And it is. It's going to give it, like I said, this year is going to be the year for it to come out, but give it another year or two, and this will be made. This will be the standard H.265. All H.264 uh, devices will be, I don't want to say obsolete because I'm pretty sure they'll have a backwards compatibility option, but it's, yeah. it's oh. just the future. Is H well, this is um, something I don't know. I'm going to bring it up now. Um, H.265 is going to take over the whole. Um, thing or are you going to have an option between H.264 and H.265? Can you record at H.264 and then have an option of recording at H.265? Well, let me put it like this. MJPEG was the standard many years ago. Right. When H.264 came on scene, that option was there for a couple of years. Today's DVRs, today's devices no longer have that option. It's just H.264. Okay. I so eventually it's going to move that way. That's right. I remember um, doing a, editing a video once, and it gave me an option. Uh, of course, it was back then when H.265 wasn't you know, available yet. But that's why I was asking. I, yeah. wanted, I was wondering if you can you know, switch through. Um, yeah, for sure. It, I mean, for the first couple of years, because people have to adapt, stuff like that. You're going to get the option. But eventually, it, it's going to be the mainstream. It's going to be the platform for every device. And, of course, H.264. 266 will be, you know, years down the road. That's down. That's yeah. down there. <laughs> so it's going to continue to evolve, but yeah, that's a good question. It, it is it is going to be backwards compatible and always will be, but the options will eventually go away and it's going to be the standard. So let's talk about 4K res. This is the ultra HD of of today actually. Um what what is really interesting is that, yes, you see a lot of things, 4K this and 4K that, but we need to know and we need to learn how to use 4K, just so we don't have any upset customers or upset um, comments or, you know, like you got to, if you have 4K DVR, you got to have a 4K camera and a 4K monitor 
You can't just have 4K DVR and expect everything else to be 4K because yeah. it just doesn't work that way yet. <laughs> and that's a good point that Nancy brought up. So we're going to give you guys a quick lesson in resolution. Uh, Real every, quick, because every... <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone knows that we're just going to like lay it out there. Nowadays, you go to buy your TV, everything's 4K. But a lot of people don't know that just because you have a 4K TV doesn't mean you're watching 4K. There's not too many things out there that are still 1080. That's funny because my mom, well, this is a quick story. My mom, she bought a 4K TV. She was really excited about it. She's like, I got a 4K TV. This is awesome. And I'm like, yeah, mom, but you're not watching it in 4K. And she's like, but what do you mean? It's on the box. So I'm like, mom, let me explain. <laughs> and that's a good point because years back, 720, even though you had 1080 TV, you're only watching 720. Last year, before... Um, HD, CCTV started to expand, a lot of people had 1080 TVs. They weren't watching 1080. You're only going to be as strong as your weakest point in your system. Your system right. So if you're still watching, you know, 800 TV lines on a, on a 2 megapixel TV, you're only going to see 1080 TV lines, I mean, 800 TV lines. And so we're only bringing this up because, I mean, um, it's something that everyone should know because we still get calls in today saying, well, my camera is not as clear, and I'm like, well, what you know, resolution is your DVR set up at? And then that's where the things start to come in, and you know, we just want to keep bringing it up so you know people will be more informed. You know, so why why doesn't it show up as this? Well, you don't have this kind yeah. of thing. And that's why we have these webinars, education. We want to educate you guys on how the stuff works, why it is what it is. And just like a reminder also, because yeah. you know, you have end users, they don't they don't know and I'm not saying they don't know, but you know, they're hiring you guys to do the job for them. And if they have any questions or concerns, they're gonna ask you guys. So we just wanna make everything easier for all of you. Yeah, and that's a good point that Nancy brought up. So we're the educators, the installers, the the ones um, doing the systems, it's it is your job, your duty to educate your customers on what and why and how and things work. We pick this up a lot because, um, you know, I work directly with the techs and we, I, I hear the calls that go in and out. Sometimes it's a, uh, you know, really easy fix. Sometimes it's a more complex fix, but we pick up our webinar um, subjects based on the calls we get in. So. We have had, you know, different people, like the same thing, um, people are asking, well, our, our cameras are 4K, but we're not seeing them in 4K. And then it's like a simple fix, like, well, what kind of screen are you using? Are you using a newer monitor? Are you using an older monitor? Because the monitor makes all the difference. Yep. Yep. So, like we said, the, the lowest point in your system is going to be, you know, you want everything to match. Um, but you are going to see 4K start to really mainstream this year um, you're gonna see it everywhere everywhere is gonna be 4k and now you're actually gonna be able to start being able to use that 4k TV that they bought or cameras that they bought because now everything will be compatible right so moving on our last little uh, part of h.265 would be data yes. and I know uh, Nancy's pretty interested in data Definitely, because <laughs> I'm always maxing out my storage and then my cloud and drives and well, this is, you know, and I'm just using photos, so for like installers and um, integrators, you know, how can we make video, surveillance video, be more efficiently stored so we have more of it and not have to get rid of it to make room for more. And that's, uh, the key point is more. Um, Although hard drives are getting a lot cheaper nowadays, we're up to eight terabytes, um, and all that's great. But now we can fit eight terabytes, which really, with the H.265 compression, is equivalent to sixteen terabytes now. You know, sixteen you can, terabytes. That's a that's that's, that's a lot. A of lot. Pictures. <laughs> for me, at least. I've been in um, the technical industry for a lot of years. I remember when I think my first PC had. A thirty gigabyte hard drive, and that was thirty gigabytes. My that phone was like amazing. Has more than 
Oh my gosh, that's that's a lot. I was so excited and so amazed that I had 30 gigs on my PC. That's, that's a lot. Well, that's a lot back then, but now. Yeah, that, I'm not I giving you guys how old I am, but that should say a lot about my age. But yeah, this guy's like <laughs> pushing 60 right now. <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> so yeah, like we said, uh, you're able to get double the space out of out of your hard drive, um, which took you know. Twice the amount of hard drive space now takes half because of H.265 because of the compression. You compress the video down to a smaller size and keep the quality. And also these terabytes, they're not going to increase in price. Just because you save 50% doesn't mean you're going to buy buy it for double the money. It's still going to be the same price. You're just going to be able to fit more more video into it. That's yeah. pretty much it. I mean, this is not like a sales pitch or anything. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's the same price. You're yeah. not really losing anything. That's a good point. If anything, you're doubling your money because now you're able to get double the space out of what you paid for before. And I love so. saving money. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't, right? <laughs> okay, so that's going to pretty much wrap up our H.265 and technology portion. Almost, almost. One more topic. One more topic. Cloud storage. Cloud storage. Ugh. So... Cloud storage is a big, big thing. It's like we get calls all day. Like, do you guys support cloud storage? Cloud yes. storage, cloud storage. Everybody wants cloud, cloud storage. The cloud. Where is the cloud? That's where I want to know. <laughs> what is the cloud, right? People don't even really know what the term. It's a term, basically. It's not. It's literally in the cloud. Like, <laughs> it's up there. You don't see it, but it's there. <laughs> what does it mean, though, right? So, basically, the cloud is just a remote storage. It's, in layman's terms, it's space that you have not on your device. That's all it is. The cloud could be OneDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox. It I could have, be in your home. I have more than two of these mentioned on here, and I can <laughs> say that they're pretty maxed out. But, you know, I'm on the free trial kind of thing, so I'm not paying for anything. But, of course, if you want more space, you're going to have to pay for it because nothing's free. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, the cloud is pretty interesting now. Um, I mean, before we would have hard drives, flash drives, um, every – all your all your information would be stored on some kind of tangible device and now it's just up in the air yeah and that's so we see a lot of this in our industry I'm pretty sure everybody's experienced customers asking for what about cloud what about cloud um, can I put cloud storage on you know um, you're gonna see this year a lot of um, CCTV companies start to adopt this this um, new cloud technology um, we currently have it only as a backup to your still pictures because it's still the cloud's been around for a while, but to the CCTV industry, video yeah. is still yeah. a large file. It's large, it's heavy, especially if you're gonna go high quality. You know, you yes. have to find the most efficient way to work around that. Yes, and hard drive space is getting ex is getting way cheaper, but cloud storage may seem cheap when you're talking terabytes of cloud storage. It is yeah. not cheap. It's not cheap. I mean, like I said, nothing's free, but you know, we gotta we gotta do it from somewhere. You yeah. Know? And the reason why I bring this up is because it's gonna be big this year. Customers are gonna be asking for it. Um, I, me personally, there's nothing like having it on your device because guess what happens if that server goes down? That's right. Yeah, that really scares me too. Sometimes it, you're putting your information in someone else's hands. But you know, it could it's 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 a really good thing and it's also like a really scary thing. So in my opinion, I would always, you know, I would have a cloud and I would have like a like a backup, like a hard drive or something. Exactly. Um it's just, you know, the cloud obviously is cooler nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just throwing it out there. That's a good point. Um cloud storage is good as a backup, but uh, I recommend you to your customers let them know that it's good to have a file on them or on their DVR. Tangible, and, yeah. Tangible device to back up your stuff on. So let's move on. Um, oh look, it's a picture of me. My <laughs> to get this picture. <laughs> I took this yesterday when she wasn't looking. Um, I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? Doing? Okay, this is. Oh man. This is one of those days <laughs> my so, computer looks like that too. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about upgrading, uh, customers upgrading their systems. You don't want to look like Nancy. <laughs> what are the reasons to upgrade resolution, uh, analytics, hard drive space, cloud storage we just talked about? Um, how to get your customers to upgrade? 
or when do they need an upgrade actually? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have, you know, you have IP, you have H.265, you have HD, there's analytics, there's the 4K, you know, the things that we talked about, but, but, I mean, upgrading is not just upgrading what's, you know, new in technology, it, it can be as simple as upgrading your, your camera, um, because now more cameras are being installed and being replaced from, from low resolution systems. And uh, most of the footage captured is not be able is not really recognizable because the resolution just sucks. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of you know how many people everybody has cameras today. A lot of people don't know that that eighty percent of those cameras out there are not able to be used in court. What's the point of having? I mean, it records like what happened, but I mean when you're trying to prove something when you're trying to see into detail you can see by the images here it's blurry you can tell you can kind of tell more or less what it is but it's blurry and then yes it's still 700 TV line but at least you're, you're getting better you're getting there but imagine just replacing the 700 TV line with 1080p how uh, easy is that who, who actually has um Today, someone's sitting there watching their cameras. No, it's all dependent on the video that was recorded. You're going right. back. Yeah. So we'll when you back. go pull that back and you get video like this, it's 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 not good. You want to see, you want to be able to prosecute um, whoever it is that stole or whatever's going on. You want to be able to see what happened, who was it, did it. Yeah, like just easy. Like okay, look at the difference here. You know, we have analog. It's yeah, it's clear. But look at IP. You can pick it up right away. Oh, that's a woman. Oh, she's wearing sandals. Look, even on the analog side, look at she's wearing shoes. Um, and then you can tell this guy, you know, he's like, his head shining, his, his head's bald. You can tell into detail, like, what's in that, in those boxes. Um, it's just, it's just efficiency and convenience. You don't have to go in there and try to make it clear or try to modify it. It's just there already. Yeah, pretty much. It's a no-brainer. It's just clearer. It's just better. Um, but what? Yeah. So a lot of those customers now they have IP or HD quality images. How do you get them to upgrade? How do you let them know that technology is improving? You already told them a year ago that they needed clearer cameras. You know, they trusted in you, and yeah, they have clearer cameras. But now, as technology grows. Um, What's how is it getting better? What's getting better? When is it time to upgrade? You're gonna see upgrade. this year. Upgrade. Go. <laughs> you're gonna see this year uh, hybrids emerging. They've been around for a couple of years. You're gonna see them emerging to the market. Um, I like the word hybrid. Everything's um, hybrid. Everything is. <laughs> it's just hybrid. You know, you get the best of both worlds. Hybrid, you know. What, what is the best of both worlds? So, what is the best? Yes, let's go into detail about that. HD over coax. It came on the scene two years ago. Last year, it was big. It was huge. Um, it was pretty hipster. Yeah. HD quality over a coax. You know, you're getting IP quality at at analog prices. Big. Um, but what are you missing out on? And the IP side is analytics, um, software, basically. Features, so now you're gonna get the best of both worlds. Like analog, and it's like okay. I see it as an ice cream cone with vanilla and chocolate. That's like, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the true hybrid MVP. <laughs> but when you're applying it to analog and IP, I mean, that's like your guys' MVP. <laughs> yeah. How many of you guys have had customers that need, you know, analytics or some? Type of feature that's only on IP cameras, but they don't want to spend the money on a you know ten thousand dollars on a system when their budget is for a analog system. Well, now you can add that one, two, three, four IP cameras that have those features, still get the HD quality, and still pay the same price as a uh, traditional analog system. Right. Now you're going to have that big time this year. Every company out there is going to have hybrid systems. You're going to see them coming out of your everywhere. Do you kind of think that this hybrid system is leading more into um, getting 
the whole CCTV industry to switch over to IP? Oh, eventually. Eventually, that that's that's where we're going. That's where we're going to be. It's going to be IP. Who knows, but it's going to happen. That's for sure. IP. That's for sure. And so this is a perfect opportunity for you guys to um, let your customers know you have HD quality now. You have the quality of IP, but yeah. five, ten years from now? It's going to be IP. It's going to be, and we're not. When we're talking to customers. We're not trying to. I mean, well, end you. There's really, I, you know, you don't want them to think that we're trying to upsell them. Um, it's just what we want them to start using as other main platform. It's just the future. It's just the future. I mean, it's just the same thing. You know, you used to um, do Morse code to get over with messages, <laughs> and now you just type in your message through freaking text. You know, it's that kind of thing. We just got to move over to. Uh, a new technological platform. Yeah, yeah, it's the truth. And um, okay, so plug and play systems. Um, a lot of people were really iffy about this, even though plug and play is like the number one easiest thing, most convenient um, feature, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, you just plug in your camera and pretty much plays. The heck is no easier than that. The what? It gets no easier than that. It, it doesn't. I mean, who wouldn't love that? But, you know, with, a, with like issues going on with like hacks and being vulnerable, and, you know, a lot of people are really, really skeptical about all of this and whether they should use it, whether they should not, and they should just stick to what they already have. But you can enjoy the, the convenience of this by simply having a password. It's that simple. Um, it's super simple. I mean, put a password on things, but not just, oh, 1234. You know, that's not a password. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> but put something down that will protect your system, protect yourself. And yeah, we bring this up just, just to remind you guys it, it is the responsibility of the person selling the system or installing the system. So that your customer know, make them feel comfortable about the upgrade, that they're not vulnerable. As long as the steps are taken to to make sure that everything's going to be okay, a simple password goes a long way. Even though they don't feel threatened by the fact that they can be hacked, you know, it's always good to tell them that they should have a password, just in case. Yeah, I mean, last year the big thing was it was all over the news, totally. all, all over the tech, all over our industry. All about, the hacks, all the everything. You know, we we all heard it, we all dealt with it. I and, mean, yeah. Bottom line is a bunch of Propaganda. Yeah. You know, um, There's even things... little hackers out there. <laughs> I mean, really, how many people out there are really concerned about somebody watching their four cameras? There's, if someone's watching your four cameras, there's probably something <laughs> else you should be more concerned about. Uh, it's kind of creepy, but <laughs> I mean, it, there's, there's creepy people out there. What can I say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's just important to educate your customers as installers, as as uh, even end users, if you're listening, it's important that you put a password on, on sure, your stuff. Even put a password on your phone. Like, I had the big mistake that I didn't put a password on my phone. And I lost my phone. And I was, like, so worried people were going to hack into, like, my social media account and, like, ruin and, like, just ruin all my, you know, all my stuff. It's just, it's not just this. Like, put a password on everything. Protect yourself. Make it super technical. And don't write it down. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just, just a reminder. Guys. And that wraps up our webinar. Do we have any questions um, at all? I know this stuff was just like informative, but I mean, if you guys have anything, go ahead and type it in. Um, we can see the question right here. Um, that this this webinar was presented by myself, Nancy. Uh, that is not my email. <laughs> I am not Kenneth. But if you have any questions, um, my email is nancy at voledco.com. Uh, if you guys want a copy of this webinar, if you guys want more information, if you guys need anything from us, go ahead and email me, nancy at voledco.com, or you can email um, Mike Lugo. He's the tech. He's the, the brain the brain of this place. So <laughs> he'll tell you everything. And that's our phone number. Uh, give us a call. Uh, our website, bolletco.com, um, all our stuff is on there, news, uh, products, everything. And then our social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, it's all there. We want to thank you so much. We really appreciate all our attendees and our registrants. Um, 
this webinar is it happens every month on Thursdays and we try to bring in you know useful subjects for you guys uh, if you guys have any any comments feel free to email us um, copies anything uh, suggestions we're open to that too to make this better for you guys uh, that's why we're doing this um, um, anything else we need I want to thank you guys. That once again, yeah, like Nancy said, this is for you guys. So if there's a topic you guys would like to learn about or know more about, let us know. We'll um, set something up. And we try to keep it really efficient. Um, we don't want to take up much of your time. I know over here it's still it's before lunch, and um, on the East Coast, you guys just had your lunch. I'm pretty hungry right now, <laughs> so I'm probably got a snack. Um, but yeah, I just um, if you guys want to tune in next month um, for our other webinar. Hopefully I can be here with you guys again. Hopefully I wasn't too boring. <laughs> um, yeah, just just let us know. Thank you guys. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna head out now. You guys have a good one. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a good weekend. Can't wait for Friday. <laughs> okay. Bye.